Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joe Stun Unboxing. I hope you're doing better than I am because I'm suffering from man flu, a bad bout of it. So forgive the uh, croaky voice and all. If I sneeze, don't take it personally. It's you know, it's not it's not your deodorant. It's just I got caught in the rain last week. I think that probably probably did me in. But anyway. We've got the five versus five coming up, as you know, matching versus Queensbury. I'm going through doing one at a time uh, prediction videos. And I thought um, with this one, I'd go, uh, go in on Ray Ford versus Nick Ball because I think this is a really fascinating matchup. Uh, both guys undefeated. Both guys have a draw on their record. Both guys, you know... Very, very good fighters, but in different ways. Um, now you have the five foot seven inch, inch Ray Ford, who is currently fifteen wins with eight knockouts, one draw. He's um, from Camden, New Jersey, and he's twenty five years old. He's coming off um, an excellent title winning effort, a WBA featherweight. Of, it was a vacant belt. But he won it against um, uh, Otterbeck Kolmatov, a last round stoppage. There was only a handful of seconds left. It was a terrific fight to watch. It was only about seven seconds left. Or something. It was like less than 10 seconds anyway left of the fight. And am I right in saying he was behind on cards? Because it was that type of fight, you know, the very give and take. Again, contrasting styles between Ray Ford and um, uh, Otterbeck Kolmatov. But finally, Ford pulled it out of the fire. Um, not without a few little, you know, you can call them crisis points, but a few little moments where he had to sort of check himself. He was he was shaken, I think, in one of the earlier rounds. I can't remember which one offhand. But there's no doubt about it. I mean, that was, that was just in March of this year. So that's, that's recent. Um, and prior to that, I mean, he beat Jesse Magdalene, unanimous decision. That was a good win. Magdalena had only lost once before in 30 fights. That was um, early, early-ish last year, about March, April, May last year, 2023. Uh, that was his only fight last year. So, But he did the 12 rounds there, and he did nigh on 12 rounds with Kolmatov. So he's been getting the rounds in, and at only 25, he's pretty much coming into his, you know, into his prime years, you might say. Now, he did say after the uh, Kolmatov fight that he was probably not going to defend the belt because he just found making featherweight too difficult, a real struggle. 5-7 for a south put, for a, for a, south, for a, a featherweight. Um, it's not particularly tall, not really, but, you know, maybe if he gets himself a, a good... Uh, Good dietitian, good nutritionist. He can make the weight well for one last time, and he'll have to because Nick Ball at five two is very, very short for a featherweight. Nick has nineteen wins, eleven KOs, and the one draw. And the one draw was in his last fight against Ray Vargas. And Vargas, I think, is very tall for a featherweight. About I think he's about seven or eight inches taller than than Nick Ball, and that was a draw, a split. Uh, split decision draw. Um, Vargas was down in rounds eight and 11. Um, and you can argue the toss about the validity of those knockdowns. But there's no doubt that in the first six rounds of the fight, Vargas was doing some good work, which is why probably he escaped with the draw. He, that was for the WBC featherweight title. Um, prior to that, Nick Ball had, draw, had um, unanimously appointed uh, Isaac Dogbay, former champion at Super Bantam. Um, and he, he did it wide as well. And that, that was towards the back end of last year. Uh, he also had a win, uh, a 12-round stoppage win against uh, Ludumo Lamarti. And I think Lamarti was taken to hospital afterwards. I think there was an, quite a serious injury involved there. So Ball and Ford have proven that they can do that 12-round distance without any problem at all. Um, Ball is, is an orthodox fighter, very, very aggressive, hyper-aggressive, comes forward, slings big punches over the top, uh, works the body quite well. I mean, he's, he's just... Um, 
he is a little fireball. He really is. He's just a, this ball of kinetic energy. And in fact, he came to prominence uh, back in 2022 when he took on Nick Lowe on the undercard of uh, one of the Tyson Fury fights. Was it the, I think it was a Chisora 3 contest. Uh, and he stopped Lowe in six rounds, um, picked up the WBC silver featherweight belt. And I think he was pretty much brought in as almost an opponent for Lowe. So Lowe at the time, I think, had lost only one fight. But Ball was an unknown commodity. And when you look at him, because he's so short, I mean, he's really the, the, the height of, say, a, you know, a light flyweight. Um, it is, it's easy to be lulled into a false sense of security. Um, now, he get, he get the job done early as well, because he blew out a guy called um, Jesus uh, Rubio in one round. And he's got some spite about him, Nick Ball has. Um, he said afterwards, that's how you get rid of a Mexican. Because a lot of people are saying, is this Rubio guy any good? You know, he's come over here because we're in Britain. We're, we're used to these Mexican fellas coming over and causing upsets. But Ball was having none of it. Um, and when you see him interviewed, there is a sort of quiet menace about him. Um, now, if you contrast him with Ray Ford, Ray, Ray Ford, like I say, he's tall, he's 5'7", but he's also a southpaw. Um, and I think he's two two or three years, I think he's two years young, because he's 25, I think Ball's 27. Uh, so it, there is a great deal in it as far as age is concerned. I don't think it will make a great deal of difference, but Ford is the type of person who he, he likes you to come at him. Um, he can be front-footed, but I think he, he prefers to use his skills, not necessarily go looking for one-punch knockouts, whereas Nick Ball is the type of person who will fire punches you know, with mean intentions on every single one of them. In fact, he can fall into a trap a little bit of a trap in being easy to read. And I think that was probably part of the problem against Ray Vargas because Vargas tall and rangy, but he does fight quite small. But Vargas, you know, also Vargas is, Vargas is older. Vargas was, I think he was 33 at the time. Um, it probably is still, still 33 because like I say, that fight was only a few months ago. Uh, but Vargas was, uh, was able to kind of time ball and, you know, use use a bit of slickness. Ball was got got a bit too predictable and he wasn't varying his the weight of punch. It wasn't it's not a case of like he'll touch you with a couple of punches and then ping one over the top or, you know, a miss with the right, miss with a soft right and then come back with a big left hook. Or he doesn't do that. He just every punch has got meat on it. And Vargas, I, I watching that fight, I thought Vargas was able to sort of read his attacks. Um, not that Ball's attacks aren't varied. I mean, he, yeah, I guess if you're that short, you know, you, you, the body is is, <laughs> is going to be the most obvious option. But Ball does like to headhunt as well. He, weirdly enough, even even though he does punch quite well to the body, he's also, he does like to um, look for the head as well. He, he tends to sort of fall into that. Maybe it's a bit of a trap of looking for, the knockout, the headshot knockout um, with, you know, a single punch. Whereas I think Ray Ford is more of a counter puncher, more of a slickster, more some, someone who, who can be aggressive, but likes to use his skills more. Uh, and also with that Southpaw stance, um, it's possible he, he could give uh, Nick Ball some problems from the Southpaw stance. Um, certainly Vargas was orthodox. Um and let me think now, Dog Bay, I think Dog Bay's orth yeah, Dog Bay's orthodox as well. So this might be, the stance might be a little, something a little bit different for Nick Ball. Okay, so who do I think is going to win? Um, it's a 12-rounder. It's for Ford's WBA belt. And I think a, a considerable part of this prediction will be reliant on whether Ray Ford has done the weight correctly because he was very open having won the title that he wanted to move up to Super Feather. Um, there were times during 
during the fight with Kolmatov where who you know he didn't he didn't run out of of gas. His engine looked okay. Nevertheless, um he didn't look as physically strong as perhaps a guy who looks as stocky as, as he is could be, if you know what I mean. Kolmatov was able to out muscle him and out sort of out strong man him for, for sections of the fight. So I thought I got the impression, I could be wrong about this, that Ford was kind of trying to pace himself a little bit too much, which is why he left it very, very late. And he wasn't being as busy in certain rounds as he could have been. Now, as far as this fight goes, I think if Ford has done the weight correctly, he can use his skills to narrowly outpoint Ball over 12 rounds, narrowly outpoint him, 115, 113. 116, 112 tops. I don't see, see this being a 9-3 fight, a 10-2 fight, anything like that. Um, I think Ball's energy, Ball's determination, and I just I just think he's, he's just so, he's so busy, he's so determined. Um, he's going to pick rounds up. He, he, he doesn't let you breathe. I mean, he smothers you. Ford's got the skills to... So let's say he's losing after three rounds or four rounds. He's got the skills to take over in the middle rounds, to come back, maybe to start to read ball. Ball is obviously the smaller guy. He's got to come in. Ford is going to have to keep him on the end of the jab when ball is still fresh. But Ford's going to have to go to work. He, he can, you know, don't, just because a guy is short don't mean you can't go to the body yourself. He can bang to the body, maybe zap a bit of ball's energy. And I just see, I see Ford being the more varied fighter, the guy who is a bit more comfy on the back foot as well as going forward. I don't think he'll get sloppy. I see Ball definitely having periods of the fight where he's dominant. But I think over the course of 36 minutes, 12 rounds, I see Ray Ford outpointing Nick Ball. And, um, yeah. That's that's going to be my prediction. So, although, you know, they both got a draw on their record. What price on a draw, you know? Wouldn't be um, unheard of in the case of Ball. I mean, he's, he, that would be second draw on the bounce. Sometimes fighters have that, you know. But what do you think? Comments below. Um, and let me know who you think is going to win and how they're going to win. And uh, Ball is the Queensbury fighter. Ford is... Is the matchroom one. Uh, so if I'm correct, my two predictions so far, which were Spider Richards to stop Willie Hutchinson and now Ray Ford to outpoint Nick Ball, that'll be 2-0 to Queensbury, uh, to uh, matchroom. So what do you think? Comments below. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're new, of course, and hit the like button if you don't mind as well. That'd be a big help on us. And yeah, thank you very much. I will speak to you soon and bye for now.